a uh, few years ago, Gail and I uh, were on vacation in Florida, and uh, we were drawn to uh, St. Augustine, Florida, because that is where the Fountain of Youth is, right? Uh, the oldest city in America, and you know, we've heard all the hype, uh, some of the things that said when the early explorers came, um, Ponce de Leon drank from the Fountain of Youth, and the others drank from the Fountain of Youth, and they immediately felt younger, uh, looked younger. That, that radiance uh, changed about them, and that's interesting to talk about on Transfiguration Sunday. And so we, um, we decided we were going to go visit the Fountain of Youth because, you know, we were getting older and we're desiring to be younger and hey give it a try you know why not so we went to the very touristy now fountain of youth that you have to pay admission to get into and and all of that and stepped up to this spring where this water's coming out of which has for hundreds and hundreds of years come out of what is known as the fountain of youth and got our little cup full of water and I took a drink and I immediately felt a change in my life. I felt like I had just drank the most worthless, awful tasting water in my life. It was horrible. It was acidy and uh, tasted like sulfur. And I didn't take the second sip or the second taste. And lamented about how much we paid to go into that place to drink awful water. I thought about that as, as I read this last letter to the church of Laodicea. Because there is this very familiar a verse of scripture here that says that if you are neither hot or cold and only lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. Now, not many of us desire to drink lukewarm water. We desire to be either hot or cold. But the significance of this is that Laodicea was about 40 miles from the city of Philadelphia, from the church of Philadelphia. And that's the church that we talked about last week. And about eight miles from Laodicea, there was this hot spring that bubbled over with water. And the historical reference is that this hot water flowed right through Laodicea. And it was so hot that when it got to Laodicea, it was lukewarm. And so this was a recognizable reference for the people there who were receiving this letter that that lukewarm water, which was also tainted with uh, bacteria and um, sulfur, was very unpleasing to taste. And, and here's this reference, that if how you are the taste of Jesus to the world is only lukewarm and, and, and has these, these hints of bitterness that, that Jesus doesn't desire that. That he says he would rather us, us be hot or cold and, and not ruining the faith or by, by showing that by, by how we live our lives. And so I think it is important for us to realize in our own lives that we have a choice to make. There can be no middle road. That there has to be right and wrong. That there has to be being hot for Jesus or being cold for Jesus. That, that we just can't 
continue to think that everything might be okay, but that we need to move to the place where we are in that direct, unrefined relationship with Christ where everything tastes good and is pleasing. It's interesting that, that there are a couple of, of really important uh, scriptures in here that I think is important for us to realize today. One of those is verse 19 where it says, Those who... Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So be zealous and repent. So I know we don't like people to tell us when we're wrong. Right? We don't like people to tell us when we've made mistakes. And certainly, we have that same relationship with God. When God speaks to us and tells us, maybe you're not right... Maybe you've made this mistake. Maybe you've sinned against it. Maybe you've not followed in the path of righteousness. We don't want to hear it. We, we turn from it. We, we miss what God's saying because we try to manipulate God to do what we want God to do. And that's a dangerous place to be in our relationship because then we can't fulfill all of the benefits or, or understand all of the benefits that, that Christ has for us, that God has for us when we choose to only believe what we want to believe, when we choose to only go where we want to go, when we choose to minister to those only who we desire to minister to. God called us to follow, to go into the world, to preach, to teach, to baptize. And, and there was no limitation in that. And, you know, I pray that if I... In, in my ministry, in my personal walk, that I have limited that in any way or have said that I do not believe some people are worthy of God's grace, I pray that that is not seen, not experienced. Um, and that in following, following what the Word of God says um, becomes most important. You know, it's interesting that our relationship, uh, our, our Christian relationship has, has evolved that we haven't always made Christ that priority, but yet Christ is always, always reaching out to us, speaking to us. As uh, last week in the, the Church to Philadelphia, we heard the um, the call that the, the door is wide and that all are welcome. A and this week we have that same reference. Could you go to that picture, Dawn, that you showed for Gail? We go to that same reference of Jesus at the door. And uh, Gail did a very good job at explaining that to the children uh, this morning, but it goes along with the scripture where it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him, and he with me. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne, as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. The door, as Gail mentioned, has no handle. This talks about not a physical door, but a spiritual door, the spiritual door to our heart. And so the, one of the greatest messages out of this is that we have to be willing to open that spiritual door of our hearts. And just because we look good on the outside 
doesn't mean individually that our hearts are in the right place. And so it, it comes to us in how we are going to respond. How you're going to allow Jesus to come into your heart, to take over. And it's not, well, I already did that like 40 years ago. I'm good. No, 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 no. Every day you have a choice to make. To allow Jesus into your heart. To guide you and to direct you. And the scripture ends. May he who have doors, let him hear. Let her hear. What the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And so this morning, it's my prayer that you hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. Not what anybody else is saying, but what God is speaking to you, to your heart. Because that's really what's going to get you through. Let's pray. This morning, Lord, speak, speak volumes to us. And I pray for myself this morning. And I pray for everyone who hears that we'll consider this as a clear call, a clear invitation to our lives to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Speak, Lord. Speak to us. May we be changed according to you. Not to anything else, but according to you. And hear your call. And it's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen.